This week on The Communicators, congressional reaction on the FCC's effort to reclassify parts of broadband Internet service, with two members of the House Subcommittee on Communications. Joining us are Republican Representative John Shimkus and Democrat Mike Doyle. Well, the past couple weeks on the Communicators program here on C-SPAN, we've looked at the issue of reclassifying broadband services from Title I to Title II. Two weeks ago, we talked with industry folks about their position on this issue, and last week we talked with Robert McDowell, the ranking Republican on the FCC. And this week we are joined by two members of Congress to get their perspective on the issue of reclassifying broadband services. We are joined by David Hatch of Congress Daily, who will be joining in the questioning. And right now, John Shimkus, a Republican of Illinois and a member of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, which has oversight of the FCC, is joining us from Capitol Hill. Congressman Shimkus, why are you opposed to reclassifying broadband from Title I to Title II? Well, first of all, people have to really establish if there's really a problem. Uh, there is no problem right now. Uh, the, the, the Internet has been the, the really boom engines for job in the economy for decades, not well, a decade. Uh, we're afraid that as the national government intervenes to make decisions to control the pipes, that there'll be less intervention, less job creation. And it's, uh, you know, it, uh, this whole telecom act is like 1933 regulation and trying to bring it to the and use those laws to enforce the digital age is, is crazy talk. Congressman, uh, Democrats in both chambers have announced plans to update the Communications Act. Do you support that effort? And is there any chance that telecom leg legislation could emerge this year? Well, not this year, but I mean, the last Telecom Act uh, rewrite took about six to eight years. Uh, it's important that we, We've been talking about it, even, even when Republicans are in majorities, because the the uh, the FCC is is broken up and and they're stove piped into an environment that doesn't reflect the digital age. So I'd be very excited about it. I think it would help the FCC, even in their day to day management of businesses, of when they can talk to each other, when they cannot. Uh, talking about the new technology today and getting. Uh, a, a, a new look at it. It, it, is, it is timely, but that just shows you how quickly this industry moves because uh, 96 Telecom Act is now, uh, you need to address the FCC for a new era. Uh, Congressman Shimkus, does uh, the FCC, is this a backdoor way in your view of getting net neutrality legislation? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> How'd you guess uh, exactly what they want to do? And, and the problem with, that we have with that is uh, if you're a capitalist and you believe in supply and demand, what they want to do is have the government control the what I'm going to call the pipes, um, and and that the government determine uh, what gets sent over lines and 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 be the cop versus allowing the competitive market and the capitalist system. And if the pipes eventually become constrained, which they're not now, so there's no issue now. Um, we want to incentivize the build out of more pipes and and more jobs. Um, it's, it's really kind of the real national debate here in Washington. Centralized control, decisions made out of Washington versus uh, freeing up the private sector to meet the needs of Americans. And, and it, that's why this, this uh, my subcommittee on telecommunications is so exciting. It just moves too fast. Uh, it, uh, new things happening way before uh, government can get its hands around it. And that's the benefit of its growth. Um, Congressman, as a quick follow-up to my question, uh, if there is going to be telecom legislation, what would you want it to accomplish? Well, I think, uh, I, you know, this whole convergence of voice, video, data, um, and the stovepipe situations as you see really need to be converged where you don't, you know, this Title I, Title II debate is a perfect example of how reforming the Telecom Act, um, what you can't do is take data f information and now do it under Title II, which was how we, we regulated Ma Bell from, from rotary dial phone to rotary dial phone. That's, that's the law, that's Title II. And now they want to do that for data services where you have um, internet service providers and, and different folks and the breakout data flows differently. It's not in a straight line path. That's why uh, you, you got to get the, breath, the good uh, minds of the day. And we want more freedom for innovation. And we don't want government control. Uh, Congressman Shimkus, um, 
but as broadband becomes the new national medium, do you think there is a case to be made for regulating it, such as the telephone companies were regulated for years? Well, it depends on if you believe regulation uh, lower costs and provides better, qu higher quality service. And of course, uh, competitive market capitalists believe that if you want uh, higher quality service at the lowest cost, you've got to incentivize competition. Uh, what, you, what a role for government is, is to prevent monopolies and duopolies and people having so much control but then, then they are able to exert market pressure to provide lower, uh, less services and higher costs. So, but as long as you can make the case that you've got a vibrant competitive market where people are trying to give higher quality service at lower cost, we shouldn't be involved. Uh, C Congressman, as you know, there have been reports this week that FCC officials have been meeting privately with telecom industry executives to, to possibly broker a legislative deal. Should the agency be trying to seek a, co a compromise with the industry, or has it overstepped its bounds? Well, I, I think, um, again, I, I, this is really kind of the, the debate now that we're talking about here in, in Washington right now, where um, is there a legislative process? Is there a role for policy debate, law signed by the president, and then you empower the regulators versus the regulators or someone else cutting the deal through the regulatory aspect. And uh, uh, we have a separation of power in our constitution for a reason. Uh, we do not want the federal, the, 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 the executive branch to overstep its ability through the regulatory regime of changing U.S. law through the regulatory process. Uh, Congressman, do you think that uh when you, when you say that, do you think Congress needs to have a role? Is that part of the argument against the FCC moving forward with, with what they're calling the third way? That, that's exactly. I mean, that, that's the whole issue of let's rewrite the FCC uh, and, the, and the Telecom Act. Let's restructure the, the current law of the land, which then gives guidance to the FCC. We shouldn't have the FCC promulgating rules that might be uh, subverting uh, the current law of the land. Congressman, uh, uh, FCC Chairman Janikowski says that his third way proposal is a compromise that would exempt broadband carriers from most regulations that would normally apply under Title II of the Communications Act. Do you agree with his assessment that his approach actually would amount to light touch regulation? My, my point is that Janikowski doesn't have that authority to establish the third wave through the regulatory regime. My, our point is, if we want to do that, that should be through the legislative process. Uh, they are to enact and enforce the law. And if the law is outdated, uh, we don't manipulate the process through the regulatory regime to create new rules and regulations that are, as the courts have ruled already in, in some of this debate, that subverts the law of the land. And, and so let's get the SEC's input on a rewrite that, that maybe we all can agree. 282 members of Congress have already written a letter to the FCC expressing opposition to the FCC moving forward. There's been two different letters sent. Um, action is moving forward on this issue. And in fact, uh, Chair, our, our uh, Commissioner McDowell told us last week that by September, they hope to be moving into the decision mode. Uh, will Congress act before then? Um, I, I doubt it because, uh, of course, you've got uh, Chairman Waxman and you know Ed Mark and those who really want to push the net neutrality debate and 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 really do not want to intervene. I mean, elections have consequences, and and even the president uh, really had the position of net neutrality as he ran. So, taking that all all together, again, I think who who ought to be. Uh, uh, angry and frustrated is, are this bipartisan group of two different letters. I think there's, I don't know, what, 60 Democrats, and we have about 170 Republicans, the vast majority of the House of Representatives saying not to do this, and they're subverting the will of the legislative branch because they're, they're usurping our authority through the regulatory regime. Congressman John Shimkus is a Republican from Illinois. He serves on the Energy and Commerce Committee and specifically on the Commerce Subcommittee on Communications. We're joined also on the communicators by David Hatch of Congress Daily. Next question. Uh, Congressman, just as a, as a quick follow-up on Mr. Janikowski's third way proposal, since you find that so objectionable, is there an alternative that you support that would give the FCC the regulatory certainty that it needs to move forward with broadband regulation? Well, I, I'm not sure what regulatory authority they need. I, I, first, I would ask, where's the problem? And, and 
where is the outcry? And even the three cases of, of, of individuals who claimed a problem, even in some of the national storylines, resolved their problems by going to a, a different ISP, or it resolved be between the, the ISP and, and, the, uh, and the company. So uh, they have not made the case this is a problem. This, was a, a, this is a political debate by major interest in, on the West Coast that, uh, that it helps support the Democrat Party, and so that's why they're moving on this agenda. I would, I, we've been asking, show us where there's a problem. There's not a problem right now uh, in this whole net neutrality debate. Who are those political interests, Mr. Well, Shimkin? <laughs> you know who they are. <laughs> you know, our friends at Google are, are, the, are one of the major, you know, focuses, and, and, they, and they, have, uh, they have their interest, and uh, I don't, you know, I support the right to people to collectively organize, to air their grievances, and, and get the uh, 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 government changed. Uh, so I'm not disputing their right to do that. They have supporters and allies, and that's what this is about. David Hatch. Our Congressman, uh, as you know, the, the House and Senate Commerce Committees have scheduled a session for tomorrow on Friday uh, that is basically a stakeholder session with telecom uh, uh, industry um, representatives to discuss the prospects for legislation. Were Republicans fully included in the planning for this, and what do you hope to accomplish with that session? Well, I, the answer is I, I don't know the answer. I mean, I, if my staff has given a heads up and, and we're invited to that uh, the stakeholders meeting, then uh, I have not been told that. It's an interesting thing. Uh, everybody has great respect for Rick Boucher. Uh, he, he says the right things. He wants to be inclusive. Uh, sometimes he's more inclusive than, than others. Telecom crosses a, across the partisan line, just like the letter you mentioned. A whole bunch of Democrats signed one, a whole bunch of Republicans. A uh, good thing about energy and commerce is more regional than, uh, than partisan. It's something we can do. Uh, I just don't know if, if I'm is invited. Uh, does this, in your view, this process, that uh, the Title I, Title II process, affect the national broadband plan implementation? Uh, yeah, I, I think just on the periphery, I mean, the national broadband, broad, broadband based upon the stimulus bill and, uh, and the, the mapping and then the unserved, underserved debate uh, it could then eventually go into how do you then regulate the Internet. Um, and that's what we think it is. It's government intervening and in, in deciding who gets access when or maybe eventually raising funds for the de deployment of that when we've already spent and it's questionable the billions of dollars we've done for uh, uh, broadband deployment without a broadband map. Um, you know, the, the California uh, Communication Commissioner basically told me twice that you're foolhardy to spend money for broadband deployment if you haven't mapped. Well, we haven't finished mapping yet, and we're already sending out billions of dollars to compete with already established broadband providers. So. Um, it's a frustrating time here in Washington. David Hatch, final question. Uh, there has been talk about a possible appropriations rider to block the FCC from using its funding to implement both uh, Mr. Janikowski's third way proposal and his proposed changes on net neutrality. Is that something that you will actively support? Oh, yeah, but first of all, we have to say, you know, uh, Chairman Spratt said in 2006, if you can't budget, you can't govern. We don't have a budget. Uh, if you don't have a budget, how do you do appropriations? I think the plan is to wait till after the election to try to make the tough choices. So this is all overcome by events. But if we did have an appropriation bill, of course, uh, that is a way in which we can uh, stop through the funding stream, the FCC from doing something that we think would be, um, uh, I, I don't know if it's the right word, of extra uh, legal, not based upon the FCC Act, but based upon their own views of how they want to change uh, the Telecom Act through regulation. Congressman John Shimkus, Republican of Illinois, thank you for being on the communicators to talk about this issue. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Now, up next, we're going to hear from another point of view. We're going to talk with Mike Doyle, a Democrat of Pennsylvania, who is in favor of the third way. And Congressman Mike Doyle, Democrat of Pennsylvania, in a recent letter you wrote to FCC Chairman Julius Janikowski, you said that reclassification of broadband services should happen while at the same time Congress should address the issue of uh, the Telecommunications Act and updating it. How can those happen concurrently? How do you see that happening? 
Well, the problem is, is it's not happening concurrently. Congress does need to do this. Uh, our fear is, is that we're not going to do this by the end of the year, and we simply can't wait that long. Uh, the FCC has to act uh, in our absence, and I think what the FCC chairman has proposed uh, makes a lot of sense to me. And uh, do you see, if Congress does not act on telecom policy this year, do you see, uh, do you still think it's important that reclassification happen and why? Yeah, I think it is important. Uh, we want to roll out this broadband plan as, as, as soon as possible. We want to make sure that every American has access to high-speed Internet. Uh, this is being put in jeopardy with this recent court decision. Uh, the FCC needs some regulatory certainty uh, so that if they do implement this new broadband plan that it isn't subject to litigation. So we think it's important the FCC is doing what they're doing. Congressman Mike Doyle also serves on the uh, subcommittee on communications for the House and Energy and Commerce Committee. David Hatch of Congress Daily, next question for the congressman. Congressman, uh, as you know, the, the Commerce Committees in both chambers will be holding the first in a series of stakeholder sessions tomorrow about prospects for telecom legislation. What do the Democrats hope to achieve with these sessions? Well, I think one of the things we want to do is we want to empower consumers. Uh, we want to make it possible for anyone to go on an ISP and be able to visit any website they want to visit with any device they want to use. Uh, for us, this is all about the empowerment of the consumer and access to make sure that we're providing access to small businesses, to the disabled, uh, to rural, or, rural America, so that every American has access to high-speed internet. Those are our goals, and that's what we're going to try to achieve with these meetings. Do you expect that telecommunications legislation will be offered this year in the House? In, and if so, who would introduce it, when, and what would it seek to accomplish? Well, I, I, I fear that we're, the clock is running out on us this year, and, and uh, many of us fear that we're not going to be able to get this done in, in this session, uh, which is why we think it's important in that vacuum uh, that the FCC has to take some action. Uh, I, I would like to see it happen. Uh, I, think, I think if it does happen, uh, that we'll do it through the regular order. It'll come through our subcommittee chairman, uh, and, and, and we'll try to keep that process in the regular order, have hearings, meet with stakeholders, and do it the right way. Uh, but as I said, the, you know, the amount of days left in, in session in Congress are short, uh, and we have a lot of other issues in front of us. So uh, my, my fear is, is that this won't get done uh, in this session. It's going to be something we're going to take up next year. Congressman Doyle, 280 two of your colleagues in the House have already signed a letter opposing uh, Chairman Janikowski's third way. Can Congress stop the FCC regulatory model as it's currently being uh, going through the process? Well, I hope not. I, I think if, if members clearly understood what's at stake here uh, and, and uh, realized that, that I think they share the same goals that many of us on the committee uh, who support Chairman Janikowski's third way, uh, that, that we'd see a different, a different tone in Congress. People want consumers to have this access. We want to empower them, not the ISPs. Uh, I think most Democrats feel that way. I think a lot of people that signed the letter uh, that don't sit on the committee may have not had access to, to all the information and all the issues that are out there. Uh, I think once we have a chance to speak to members and, and uh, get more information out about what this means to the consumer, uh, that you'll see a lot of people uh, move towards this direction. Do you believe that broadband and services uh, should be rate regulated? No, and, and the chairman's not proposing that. I think that's imp uh, an important question. Uh, this is a light regulatory touch. Uh, we're not looking to affect rates with this reclassification. Uh, the basic thrust of the reclassification is on consumer protection. Uh, as I said earlier, we want to make sure that anybody can visit uh, any website that they can, that the ISP doesn't control that, that the consumer controls that. So what Chairman Janikowski is proposing in this reclassification is just a light regulatory touch. And, and it's not being opposed uh, by all the industry. I mean, there is, there is some industry opposed to it and others that are, that are working with the chairman. But I think it's important for everyone to understand uh, that's not our focus. We don't want to affect rates. We don't want to stifle investment. Uh, but we do want to empower consumers. Congressman, among the critics of Mr. Janikowski's third way proposal are 77 House Democrats, including the former chairman of the House Commerce Committee, Mr. Dingell. Why are so many members of your own party opposed to Chairman Janikowski? Well, I, I don't want to speak for, for my colleagues. Uh, I, I guess they all have their own reasons and, and uh, uh, their, their own reasons for taking the positions that they take. 
Uh, I think the chairman's in a tough position. Uh, this case, the Comcast case ruling, uh, no one expected the ruling to come down this way, but it did. Uh, and the chairman's in a tough position. If he moves forward with the broadband plan without some regulatory certainty, uh, it opens up everything we're trying to do to possible litigation. So he, he needs to do something to ensure some sort of a regulatory framework for moving forward. Uh, I think what he's trying to do is, is to do this in the best possible way, uh, to just put some consumer safeguards in, in a basically unregulated market. This is a, a light regulatory touch, and it, it's not the heavy-handedness that some people have made it out to be. Congressman Doyle, what do you say to those who say that uh, innovation and development of more broadband services could be stifled uh, with this potential reclassification? Well, I think that's interesting. The, the same companies that are saying that are telling Wall Street that this is not going to affect their, affect their investments at all, that they're going to move forward with all of their investments while they're telling Pennsylvania Avenue that this is somehow going to stifle investment. Well, they, they can't have it both ways. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is every one of these companies who are saying that have told their investors and their funders that this is not going to affect their investments or their plans to move forward. This is C-SPAN's Communicators Program. Our guest, our second guest today is Congressman Mike Doyle, who is a member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, and he serves on the Subcommittee on Communications. Joining us is David Hatch of Congress Daily. Uh, Chairman Jenikowski has the votes to adopt tougher net neutrality regulations and to restructure how broadband is regulated. Uh, since that's the case, why does Congress even need to get involved? Well, I'm not sure that we do. I, I believe that the FCC does have the flexibility under the Communications Act to do what they're doing, uh, and I hope they do it. So uh, I'm one member of Congress that, that doesn't feel a need to be involved in this uh, if, the, if the chair moves forward and works this out. I, I know that he also is holding stakeholder meetings uh, to see if we can have some sort of a, a, a plan worked out to accomplish the certainty that they need and move forward. So everybody's looking to move forward. What we don't want to see is nothing happen in a vacuum. Congress doesn't act and the FCC doesn't do anything and then this plan doesn't get deployed. That's bad for everybody. So we want to see this move forward, uh, but the chairman needs to do this to have some certainty in, this regu in these regulations to move forward. That's what he's attempting to do and I, I wish him luck with it. Uh, Congressman Doyle, have you talked with your subcommittee chair Rick Boucher or the committee chair Henry Waxman about this issue? Uh, we talk all the time. We, we have regular caucus meetings uh, within the committee and within the subcommittee. Uh, I think everybody shares the same goals. Some members see different ways to accomplish that goal. Uh, but we all want to see this plan deployed, and we all want to do what we can to make sure that that happens as rapidly as possible. Congressman, there's been some controversy this week about the stakeholder sessions that the FCC has been conducting with telecommunications industry lobbyists and executives. Is it the proper role of the FCC to be trying to broker a legislative deal, or should that be the, the domain of Congress? Well, I don't think anything untoward's going on here. I think uh, what, what the chairman's trying to do is to, is to air out all the concerns that the stakeholders have. So uh, the fact that they've had these meetings and stakeholders have a chance to let the FCC know what their concerns are, how they see uh, opportunities to move forward, where there might be consensus, uh, these are good things, uh, and, and, and I, don't, I don't really have a problem with it. I think it's a, a, a good role for the FCC to have. We want stakeholder involvement. We want everyone to have a say, and we want to fashion uh, good policy to move forward. So. Uh, I, I, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, Congressman Doyle, in your letter to Chairman Jenikowski of May 26, 2010, uh, you say that Congress needs or should review and possibly update the 1996 Telecommunications Act. Given the fact that technology moves so quickly, uh, how do you develop a framework of regulation for telecommunications without stifling innovation, without uh, having that heavy hand? Sure. Well, I think, first of all, that, that you, want a, you want an FCC that has a light touch. And we do have pretty much an unregulated market. And what the chairman's proposing is, is just that, a light touch. Uh, and, and you're right. It, it's, it's difficult. Every time we do a new Telecommunications Act, uh, shortly thereafter that those bills are passed, new technology comes up, which is why the FCC needs to have some flexibility, too, to respond to these changes that happen in the market. Uh, this isn't something where Congress comes back every year, there's a new technology or a new change and has to to do a bill. Uh, we need and we build into this act flexibility for the FCC to be able to respond to the changes in technology. So uh, I think that's the way to do it and that's the right way to do it and that's the way that we can keep current uh, as technology changes. 
uh, Mr. Doyle, you mentioned earlier that there could be an impact on the FCC's national broadband plan. And of course, that plan was released in March uh, amid very high expectations. Can you talk a little bit more about the potential uh, risk to the plan uh, as a result of all of this political jockeying? Well, not so much the political jockeying, but the, the court decision. Uh, what's thrown this into question is the uh, recent court decision uh, with Comcast uh, that has put into question whether or not the FCC has the authority uh, to do some of the regulations they need to do to move the broadband plan forward. So the fear is, uh, is if we roll out this plan without providing some regulatory certainty, uh, we could open ourselves to litigation and you're going to see various parts of this plan either held up or, or put in abeyance because of court cases. Uh, that's what we're concerned about. So that's why the chairman's doing what he's doing right now. Uh, that's why I support the, the FCC doing something uh, because Congress is not going to be able to act soon enough uh, and, and we don't want to see this uh, plan delayed much further. We want to roll it out but it, I, I think it would, would not be wise to roll it out without establishing uh, a regulatory framework in which we can do that. That's what the chairman's trying to do. Um, as you know, uh, Republicans have been extremely critical of Chairman Janikowski and his third way proposal are any of their concerns valid, or is this all about trying to score political points? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to guess their motivations. Uh, I think the chairman is trying to do this with a light touch. Uh, I think he's trying to find a way to, to work in a difficult environment right now with the court case that's happened and in view of the fact that Congress isn't going to be able to act in time and we want to get this plan rolled out. Uh, you know, this is Washington D.C. Uh, we, we play politics down here from time to time, and, and uh, some people just, uh, you know, may, may uh, uh, see this as an opportunity to not have, you know, there's a debate over net neutrality and, and uh, whether that's a good thing or bad thing. Those of us that believe in net neutrality and want to see consumers empowered uh, think the chairman's making good, good moves. But there's other down here that, that don't support net neutrality. Uh, and, and those that don't support it are, are probably see this as an opportunity to make sure that, that some of the rules that Chairman Janikowski wants to implement to empower consumers don't happen. Now, Congressman Doyle, a lot of commentators are saying and some Republicans are saying that this third way could land telecommunications policy in, in the courts for several years. Do you agree? I don't think so. I, I think what, what the chairman's trying to do is, is take a very light touch. If you really look at what he's trying to do and, and, and give a fair reading to it, uh, he, he's basically just taking four of the principles for net neutrality that we've all, uh, many people basically agreed to, uh, and adding one or two more provisions of consumer protection. Uh, again, like I said, this is about empowering consumers. Uh, the government doesn't want to tell people uh, where they can go and where they can't go on the internet. When you go on the internet and you choose an ISP, you should be able to look at any website you want to look at. You know, many ISPs have their own uh, video services. Uh, you don't want to restrict consumers to only seeing the video service that uh, that ISP happens to own. You want to be able to see all the video services available throughout the, the, the country and let the, let the market decide which service consumers want to pick. That's all this is. Uh, so I think Americans support that, and uh, I don't think this is going to be litigated that way. I think if the chairman fails to act, uh, the, the fear is that we're going to see litigation if we implement the broadband plan without any regulatory certainty. That's what he's trying to establish here. And the final question comes from David Hatch of Congress Taylor. Uh, Congressman, given that you represent Pennsylvania and that Comcast is based there, and of course there's a, a pending merger between a Comcast and NBC Universal, where do you stand on that deal? Do you support it? Do you oppose it? Would you support it with conditions? And what would you want those conditions to be? Well, I, I think that there should be due diligence done, and I think it is being done as, as that merger is being looked at. Uh, I wrote a letter uh, indicating that I support uh, the, the, that you know it have a full uh, a full hearing uh, that the due diligence is done. Comcast has already uh, made some agreements with the broadcasters uh, that has brought this uh, deal one step closer. I think there's still some other uh, negotiations that are going to take place between uh, small cable and, and and other stakeholders in that, and I think eventually it will be approved. Uh, I, I think that'll be a good thing once the, 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 all the safeguards are put in place, and it's a process that's taking place, and, and uh, it's moving forward. And Congressman Mike Doyle, Democrat of Pennsylvania, thank you for being on The Communicators. My pleasure. And as this issue continues to move through the FCC and through Congress, The Communicators will continue to cover it.